So I've been a teacher for a really long time at this point. Lesson planning was never my favorite. It always felt like it was a thing that I was trying to do last. I was just attempting to get it done. And honestly, there were some days that I was flying by the seat of my pants. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But having a resource that allows you to be able to do all of your plans in one go, feel confident about the lesson that you're giving, know that it's gonna be authentic and rigorous and your students are gonna really enjoy it, is important. And that's why I wanted to share with you how I utilize my community. Jumping in real quick, if you're not part of the community, don't stress, you don't have to have the community in order to do all the lesson planning that we're gonna have in this video. Just substitute the resources that you do have access to throughout this planning process. So hopefully that helps, but the community is available for you if you wanna have it just a little bit easier. I'm just saying, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Have to do a shameless plug the Bridging Literacy community to help plan out an entire lesson with the resources inside of it. So I'm going to walk you through how we plan out a lesson for fourth grade on text structures. You're going to see how simple this, uh, the resource itself makes lesson planning and you're going to love it. So I'm going to switch this over. What I've done so far is I've actually created this very basic template. Um, and in this template, it basically, let me switch you around. So the template has the days of the week up at the very top. And then along the side, it has different areas to focus on. So we have objective, warm up, mentor text, activity, independence, and assessment. Now this can be used for any lesson format. If you want to do it for reading, if you want to do it for writing, it still follows the same exact process. And what I like about this is it helps to scaffold the learning and you know exactly what steps you need to be taking. You can very easily put this on a clipboard, have it with you just to jot down any notes as you're going through the planning process before you start to implement it and put it into your final lesson plans. So today I'm giving you a never before see never seen before <laughs> a never before opportunity to get a sneak peek into the bridging literacy community you're going to see exactly the resources that are available and we're going to select some of those resources to help plan out an entire week's worth of lessons so let's excuse me walter walter what are you doing babes huh what are you doing Okay, go lay down. So what we're gonna do is get into the community. I'm gonna show you exactly what resources. We're gonna get those printed and we're gonna plan out an entire week's worth of lessons. Let's do it. So we're in the community and this is what the page looks like. It has uh, an alert for the next upcoming event that we have going on. And then it has various areas that I can go into. So there's a few areas that are the most important when it comes to lesson planning. So the resources section is gonna be one that we're going to explore a little bit more of. And then we also have um, our anchors and our anchor activities, which are going to be really important as well. So those three areas are going to be the ones that we can get into. There are some other ones like the issues, which are some of my favorites, which are more like units that are fun and engaging and based on a theme that the kids can work through. But right now we're just planning a good old normal lesson. So that's what we're going to do. First things first, I know that I have to teach text structures in fourth grade, but I don't understand or want to make sure that what I'm teaching and the order that I'm teaching it in is going to be the most beneficial. So there's a few different areas that I can go to. First thing that I can do is I can go to the onboarding section and I can grab hold of our BLC cheat sheet. So the cheat sheet is really going to have all of the various units to help guide me about like the order in which I wanna teach things in. If I have an order because my school provides me with that pacing guide, then I'm gonna just really focus on anchors. So I'm gonna to go to the reading informational anchor. I'm gonna open up RI5, which is all about text structures. Now in this, there is a video explanation where it goes into- so 
what exactly this standard looks like, um, how do I go about teaching it, um, what are the differences between the grade levels and the learning targets, and it has all the resources for me. So I'm gonna scroll down because what I specifically want is a hold of the organizer. So I'm gonna click on the fourth grade organizer here and I'm gonna make a copy because it's gonna put it into my Google Drive and then I have access to it forever and ever and ever, amen. Um, so here's my informational standard itself. So describing the overall text structure, I can compare it to the grade level above me and then I can compare it to the grade level below me. And it goes into like, what are the things that the kids need to know? And then what are those things that the kids need to be able to do? I then can go into the next page and it really just focuses on the fourth grade standard. So here I can see my kids need to understand text structure, event ideas, concepts, and information. They need to be able to describe that text structure in either the whole text or a part of the text. And that's gonna be really important because I can kind of finagle and just choose little bits and pieces versus just trying to read the whole thing. So if I'm looking at my learning targets, here's the progression in which I can teach it in. So I have, I can identify the structure of an informational text. I can describe the information within a descriptive text. I can describe the information within a sequential order. Um, and then same going for comparison, cause and effect, problem solution. So I need to be able to help my kids understand, okay, here's what text structures are. And then going into being able to describe in depth that particular text structure for either a text or a part of that text. So now that I have this, I can either print it out, I can keep it just in my Google Drive. And then that way I can just come back to it, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back and then I'm gonna take a look down here because it also has some text, but I'm gonna show you another location for where I can pull out my text. So now that I know what I wanna teach, I'm going to kind of give a general idea of what text structures are to my students. And then I'm going to start introducing one of those text structures. Okay, so let's go back into the main community area because that really just gives me an understanding of what is it that I'm supposed to be teaching. Now I need to start kind of going into the activities themselves. So let me go into the anchor activities and I'm gonna to go to RI5 because that's the text structures. And there's a few things that I can pull from here. So the first one is gonna be a mini text structure sort. Now this is one that can is great for helping kids identify the differences between the different text structures. I think that's a really good place to start. So I'm gonna print one of those out. Another thing that I'm gonna print out are these anchor charts because the anchor charts are a must have when you're starting to learn about them, especially because I want students to be able to identify those keywords. And then we have some task cards, some graphic organizers, and then a practice. So I do wanna have some like collaborative practice for my students. And so here's what I think I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna pull this resource for these task cards and we're gonna print out a few of them. Now here it says there's a description, a cause and effect. I really just wanna focus on description and maybe order and sequence. So if I can maybe do six or seven, five, six, seven, and two. So that's gonna be Minecraft, the candy bar, what is in bubble gum? I mean, I like that. Okay, um, let's see. Candy bar, Minecraft are on two different pages. I'm gonna print out four and then I'm gonna print out five. So let's go ahead and get those printed. So we're gonna print out pages four and five. And you're gonna see what we're gonna do with this because task cards don't necessarily need to be for just having your kids like fill out all the information on. You can use task cards in so many different ways. And one of the ways that I like to use task cards is by having my students work in collaborative groups to read this very small passage together and then complete any form of organizer. So it's gonna be a really good collaborative guided practice for them. 
and that's where I'm gonna start. Okay, so I like that we have those printed out. Let's go back and take a look at some of the organizers. So if I'm gonna work primarily with description and order and sequence, because those are the first two, I wanna grab those first two first. Ha! So I'm gonna download these. We're gonna print one and two. So print, we're gonna go into printing this one and we're gonna print from custom one to two because we wanna give students opportunity to pull it from the text, right? So we're gonna need graphic organizers to be able to do that with our kids. So now that we have those graphic organizers, um, we're gonna print out the text structure mini sword as another like collaborative inter introduction to what text structures are. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the text structure practice. So if I can pull out this resource and there's five downloads, so I can come up here, problem, solution, we're gonna do description. So let's print out that description one. And then you're probably not gonna be able to see this part because I don't have this part of my screen shared. I'm gonna print it front to back though. Um, Double-sided on print, print. If it doesn't print front to back, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's also print out the order and sequence because we need that one as well, just in case. Now, typically it would take me maybe two or three days to get through any form of a text structure. So I'm trying to account for that. Now we're planning for five days, so I'm trying to say, okay, maybe I'll start a new one, maybe not, but I'm kind of just preparing myself for that right now. Okay, so now I have those printed out. So we've gone through, I have anchor charts, but these anchor charts, which is very interesting, are printed on legal paper. So I like to use legal cardstock for these. Um, so I have to switch out the paper inside of my printer in order to be able to do that. So now we have some pieces that we can kind of pull together to start looking at creating our lesson. So what I would do is pull some of these resources and then we're gonna work in filling in the blanks when it comes to our lesson plan template that we have. And then it's gonna let us know, like, what are we missing? Do we need more guided, guided practice opportunities? Do we need to have um, more opportunities for independent practice? Like, what does that specifically look like? And I'm gonna show you how we can continue to build that. So one other thing that I did wanna show you is as we start to go back, that was the anchor activities, we're gonna go into the resources. And inside of the resources, there is the ultimate mentor list checklist. So the ultimate mentor list checklist is a collection of mentor texts that we've been gathering and then identifying where specifically as far as a learning target or your focus for your lesson, you can use it for. So if I go to my informational standards tab at the bottom, I can start to look through them. Now you're gonna see right here that there's like description, order and sequence, compare and contrast. That's what I wanna pay attention to because that's what I'm focusing on right now. And because the standard is written where it's like a collective, you're just doing them all, um, that's too overwhelming for students to do all five text structures in one go. So we're gonna give opportunities to practice. So here are some text that we can pull from. So we have National Parks of the USA, Ant Cities, Your Fantastic Elastic Brain. Um, we also have the Eiffel Tower. We have looking through the glass. So I have some of these already in my library. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out, get all the pages printed, and we're gonna see all together what we have so far. Okay, so here are all of the materials that I've printed out and I have ready to go. So one of the other texts that I did think about is all about chocolate from reading A to Z. This is a great text to use for text structures, especially if you wanna utilize it in small groups. So this is definitely one that I'm gonna be pulling. And then I have my organizer that we're gonna start filling out in just a second, but I have the independent practice for text structures. So one is on the Grand Canyon. They have some materials to fill back there. And then they have another one on the garbage collector. So that has all of those materials. I have the sort, which is ready to go here. So they're gonna identify the name, definition, keywords, visual, example, and that includes all of these. 
And then I also have text structure for description, text structure for order and sequence. And then I also have um, these as well. So all of the task cards that are printed out ready to go. I have my anchor charts. So these are legal size paper, cardstock paper that are perfect for putting up inside of your classroom. And then I picked out the text using um, the ultimate mentor list checklist. So this is trapped by the eyes. Actually, that's not what I need. So this is Tricky Vic. So that's about a con artist looking at the looking at glass through the ages. And then I also have let me. Okay, I also have this text as well, which is my fantastic elastic brain. So this one is perfect for description and one that I have utilized in the past. Plus it helps kids understand how their brain changes and evolves. Like it's very, very interesting. So now that I have all these materials, now we need to put them onto this page. So let's chat through this as I start to fill it out. Okay, so if we go back to the unpacking anchor standard, which is this page here that has learning targets, we can remember that the first learning target says I can identify the structure of an informational text. And then it starts to break down the various types of text structures that you would teach. And I originally thought that I would do this activity, but I think I would hold off until after I taught all five of the text structure. So I'm actually not going to be doing this yet. So I have my learning targets. I also have my weekly planning page that is ready to go for me to just kind of sketch out. It's not going to be fancy. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to give me an idea of, okay, but what are the gaps that I need to fill in? So for my objective, I'm taking this page and I'm just copying down these last two learning targets down here. So for Monday and Tuesday, I would have it two days for each structure. Um, I can, okay, so here's how I think I would end up doing it. So up here at the top, you're gonna see Monday and Tuesday, and it's all gonna be about description. So I need two days of a descriptive text instruction. And then I'm gonna do two days of order and sequence. And then on Friday, typically I use Friday as like a catch up day which if we go back into the community, I can go into the resource section, which has just like some general great things for you to be able to utilize to kind of support organization, all of that. I have these ketchup and pickle slides. Now ketchup and pickles is something that I learned from Michelle. And so I ended up making my own slides to go along with it. So I can grab my ketchup and pickle slide deck and what I would do is every kind of Thursday, I would identify what were the assignments that were not done and I would put my kid's name in it. So let's say that um, my first student up here is going to be Lane. And then I'm gonna have Ian. So then what I would do is I would go to their ELA block and then I would just type in the assignment that they were missing and I could share this as a view only within our LMS and kids would be able to navigate through these slides by tapping on um, their name and it would take them directly to their page. And so after they were able to finish up, I would have a pickle section. So down at the bottom, it's gonna be pickles and it would have different websites or um, activities that they could just kind of be able to choose um, to be able to complete during that class time so long as they had finished all their work. So it was nice and easy. I was able to kind of have that up and have my learner management system up and I could go through and I can just check off or I can have my pages and just check off names and if I'm missing somebody, I could definitely put them down on that list. So that is an easy way to kind of build in and I can also have some additional practice as well when it comes to the catch up and or the order and sequence and the description as well. So the next spot that we have is warm up. Now, 
we didn't really plan for warm-ups yet. So we're gonna get to that, but we're gonna skip it for right now. But the next area is mentor text. So for description, I'm gonna utilize our mentor text that we have for the Fantastic Elastic Brain. So it's gonna be Fantastic Elastic Brain. And then for the order and sequence, which if you are not using Kindle to be able to display your books for your students, like project them, it's such a simple resource. I started buying a lot of my picture books through Kindle so that I could just display it and then we could zoom in and it just allowed for all my students to have access to the text. So for some of the other ones, I have um, looking at glass through the ages. Now, this one is a little bit longer. You can kind of see it here. It smells like an old book. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys know that? Like, did you know that? And then this one is about a con artist. So it's him traveling and conning. I think I'm gonna end up doing Tricky Vic just because this is so much fun. It's a longer text, so I'm gonna have to account for that. But again, the standard says part of a text, so I don't necessarily have to finish it. I could finish it on Friday. Um, since we have kind of that open time, but I'm going to use this as my mentor text. Okay, so I have my mentor text selected for both, and I use the same one for both of them because one day I'm going to be able to read it. Um, we're going to have some discussions around it, but they're not going to be able to go super in depth with it because they just haven't had much practice with it. Um, and then for the activity, so if I'm thinking about my activity on Monday, this is me introducing what this structure is. I might be able to read my mentor text and then I think what I'm gonna do is give my students some practice through the task cards. So here's how I would end up doing this. For my guided practice, so I would show them how it's description. Like I would kind of talk them through the description piece inside of um, my mentor text. And then what I would really want my students to be able to do is identify the description inside of it. So what I would have is a group activity where they are taking a task card. So if I look at my task cards, I'm gonna do Minecraft, they're gonna love that one. So Minecraft is gonna be the one that they're gonna work on together. So they're gonna read this and they're going to identify that text structure itself. Um, and honestly, let me see. I had to do some thinking and change some things around off of the camera. And you guys are gonna totally understand. Sometimes you just need processing for all of the lessons. I decided to switch out my mentor text to Ice Bear, which is one that I used when I was in kindergarten, but it is fantastic. You could pick any other mentor text, but it's the one that I'm gonna um, pick out. So it's very, very simple. It almost has like a narrative feel, but if you can see right underneath, you get some informational pieces as well. So the craft of this story is really, really cool. So it describes the bear and gives more information about the polar bear down here at the bottom. And the reason that I did this, because, excuse the chicken scratch, because here we're going to have ice bear and then from here, they're gonna do some guided practice activity with one of the pages from Ice Bear. So what I do is I copy a page. So I just like photocopy one of the pages that I want my students to focus on. And I'm gonna give this to them in partners so that they can work with somebody collaboratively to complete it. So they're gonna do that 
From there, I'm going to have them work on a task card. So they're going to be completing one of the task cards, which actually we are going to do the Minecraft task card. So that's where I'm going to give students this task card along with... Okay, along with um, the organizer. So they're gonna have this graphic organizer. So they're gonna read the Minecraft task card independently and they're gonna submit this to me so that I can see if they can pull out details. So now I've modeled it for them. They're gonna practice with a partner and then they're going to do something independently. And so that's what I have for them um, is that Minecraft one. On the next day, um, I'm going to remodel any information that I need to model and kind of clarify. We can have conversations about the Minecraft task card. So when they come back to it, we're going to review the task card itself because it was the first independent practice. And I want to make sure everybody is on the same page. So I'm going to hand back their papers, take out the task card, read it to them, and see if anybody can share any of their information as far as what they were able to pull out for, from it. From there... I am then going to have them do another activity where they can pull out another task card from the text structures and they're going to do it with a partner but instead of them doing it on the graphic organizer I'm going to have them draw the graphic organizer. So for that I'm just going to have them use legal size paper. And then normally what I will have them do is they will take the task card. They're going to paste it up top like that. And then they can draw their graphic organizer down here at the bottom. So they're going to be responsible for drawing it, talking about it, reading it, but getting another practice with a partner from that. Okay. So now that they've done that, the final task for them is going to be to do this independent practice. So they're gonna read this independently and then they're going to complete the practice um, on the back. So they have to fill it in, but then they have to answer the questions that are just comprehension questions at the very bottom. So that is gonna be that day. The only thing I haven't filled out is the assessment. So I'm gonna type or write down the Minecraft and then I'm gonna write down the independent practice. That's gonna be how I assess them, but it's also gonna be from observation um, throughout the entire lesson. So now I have everything except for my warm up in place. And because I think I like the flow of that, I'm gonna follow that exact same flow for Tricky Vic. Except I am gonna read Tricky Vic, but I'm gonna give them an opportunity. So I might not finish Tricky Vic on that first day, but what I can do is we're going to talk about the text structure. I'm gonna show them the anchor chart. I'm gonna give them an opportunity. We're gonna read through it. And then um, I'm going to have them pick apart two pages. So I think these are the two pages I'm gonna have them do. Again, I'm just gonna photocopy it front and back keep it forever, they're not gonna take it home. And then that way they can, with a partner, pull out what are some of the events that are happening um, in order and putting it into a graphic organizer or having a discussion about it. Once they do that, I'm gonna then give them their next one, which is the task card over here. So, We're gonna do the candy bar is gonna be one of them. And then I believe we're gonna do what is in bubble gum. So we're gonna do both of these where they can put these in order and that way they have practice. So the first day is gonna be a group from a page from Tricky Vic. Then they're gonna work on a task card independently. And then the second day is they're gonna do a task card with a partner and then we're gonna do another independent practice. But that way they have as much practice as possible before we really start to get needy greedy. So that's kind of what that, those lessons would end up looking like. Okay.
we need to clarify the whole um, trying to find a warm up. Let's go back into the community and see if we can find one. Now, warm ups is really going to depend on your class and how you want to provide additional practice for them and get their brains ready. Now, sometimes I would end up saying, hey, use like your whatever it is that you're focusing on to get them thinking and talking about it. So one of the things that I am going to do is just pull out a couple of pictures to have my students describe it. So on that very first day, I'm gonna have them do a picture and they're going to find as many describing words about that picture in general. But I also know that my class needs to have practice when it comes to vocabulary and words and reading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna pull up the word matrices. And with the word matrices, what's nice about this is that it's a full year of them. And so I know that I can just take this resource and make a copy. And we're gonna identify one um, that we want our kids to be able to practice or that I want my kids to be able to practice. So I might end up just starting out with um, number 10. So I'm gonna write word matrices page 10 um, and here they're just going to write collect as many words as possible when it comes to um, building a word list so then we can type in our word list over here so they might say um uncaring uncare uncaring caring um daycare skin care care free um cares and it's a really great way for them to also practice just what does it look like when we have to put new endings on there and we have to drop that e like what is that going to be like i need to give my kids practice with that so i'm going to leave that one the next one that i think that i would really like to have my kids practice with is going to be actually in one of our anchors. So let's go back into our anchor activities. Mm. I'm thinking of vocabulary because I need them to practice with vocabulary. It's a, it's a big struggle. So I'm gonna go into vocabulary and then I'm gonna pull up the shades of meaning. So we're gonna do Shades of Meaning. And so I'm going to download this product, which again, it now has an entire year worth of Shades of Meaning. And so when I'm looking at the Shades of Meaning activity, it is going to be a bunch of them. So I think I'm gonna do, uh, ooh. I like this one, exquisite, stunning, and it goes along that same lines of like descriptive vocabulary. So I might end up doing that one. That is page eight. Neat, tiny. I'm kind of just super scanning through some of these. Okay, I think we're gonna stick with that one. So we're gonna do a shades of meaning. And then I'm going to do page eight of that activity. So that way I have those printed out ready to go for my students. Okay. And then the last activity that I think I would like for them to do is, let's see, I'm going to go into uh, narrative writing really quick and I'm going to do a Maybe we should do a write the moment. I feel like that's one that we need. We could do a write the moment. So we're gonna do a write the moment. And so this activity, and again, it's good for descriptive language, which is really beneficial when it comes to descriptive text structures, right? So here I could just kind of do the posters, but I think I'm gonna do the individual pages and then they can just paste it into their writer's notebooks. So I'm going to do page eight on this one. So that way we have that. Okay, so at this point, 
We now have, I'm gonna flip you guys around. So at this point, we know that we're gonna be descriptive text structure. We're gonna do order and sequence. We're gonna have picture word that they're gonna describe. So I'm just gonna put a picture up on the board that they're gonna describe. They're just coming up with descriptive words. So I'm gonna do like the five senses. We have our word matrices, our shades of meaning activity, and then we're gonna have the write the moment activity here. And then here we're gonna do Ice Bear and then Tricky Vic are gonna be our two mentor texts. We're gonna do a page from Ice Bear with the group activity. They're gonna work on Minecraft task, uh, task card with the graphic organizer. And then I have my assessment pieces. And then on this side, it's going to be um, another task card. We're gonna do the independent practice, which are these. Um, that I can take as an assessment as well. And we're gonna mimic that same thing. So a page from the book, a task card, and then another task card with a group, and then they're gonna do an independent practice. So that is gonna be my overall lesson um, and how I built that. One other thing that I do wanna point out is I am also going to use these think marks to help them when it comes to identifying the various text structures. So here's description. So they're gonna have a description um, think mark and then we're gonna have an order and sequence so that they know specifically what are those keywords that they need to be looking for as they're reading through, especially with those task cards in the very beginning. So the kids are gonna have that as a resource to be able to use it um, for when they're completing their assignments. So there you have it. I probably spent not even an hour doing all of that. Now granted, I don't have all my copies made. I don't have all the group pieces, but I know what I'm doing. I know what my lesson's gonna look like. Making the copies, you know, the morning of or the week before is gonna be something super simple that I can get done. But it's nice having the plan and knowing exactly what is the progression that's going to look like. And I did it all with resources within the Bridging Literacy community. And so if you're really interested in getting your hands on these resources, we are constantly working to add more to them so that you have everything you need at your fingertips when it comes to planning out your lessons, then I invite you to join it today. So you can head to the link um, in the description so that you can go and check out the Bridging Literacy community. You can learn more, put some questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer any of those for you, but hopefully you enjoyed kind of seeing this little planning process. And I would love to know what is something maybe you would do a little bit differently when it came to these lessons. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Get uh, Hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I drop a new episode. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.